listeners, this is Sapphire Hartslung, finally hosting for the MBS show. Joining me today is Norman Sanzo. Hello, I'm dead. Can't be that dead, right? Maybe. Okay. And joining me also today is the man, the myth, the hippogriff, Silverquill. I shaved my head for this podcast. It took all of 30 seconds. What? And why did you shave your head? Because it's a great gift. The gift of the Magi. Ah. Uh... I thought he was trying to be a bald eagle. Kaka, <laughs> kaka. And what's this? We're for today. And while James is still out, joining us is Torterra, aka Terrorhoof, aka that Pokemon that's trying to replace me. Get your butt back in the Master Ball. Now hold on a second. Just because I'm a red and black OC does not mean I'm evil and trying to replace you. I never said it was because you were a red and black OC. I'm some not people racist. Think I am evil. <laughs> it's not racist. It's speciesist. Uh huh. That's what they all say. That's what I say. <laughs> yes, indeed. On a regular basis. That's what he said. <laughs> There's a difference. Ah, uh. Uh, yes. And what are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about gifts and rocks and more rocks and... Confetti. Gifts. And maybe planes, trains, and automobiles, as we're going to be talking about the second episode... Well, actually, no, it's the third episode after the season premiere. The Gift of Mod Pie. Oh boy, this episode. So, how do we want to go at it? Invert alphabetical order, alphabetical order. The host makes the decision. You're right, I do have the power, and I will abuse it with all my might. Silver, you go first. What are your I... thoughts on the episode? Well, mostly enjoyment. One, Maud is always fun to see. She is a fun, deadpan character that plays off so well against the two most exuberant ponies in all of the show. I got Rarity and Pinky are usually the ones who are causing the most ruckus. Or is it a fracas? I'm going to go with ruckus. This seems to be in the vein of Explore Equestria, the theme that they've been trying to advertise leading up to Season 6. However, honestly, exploring means more than just, oh, look at the pretty place. There's a certain lack of identity to the locales they visit other than, oh, hey, that looks like New York. But all in all, I really enjoyed it. I'll, there'll be some comparisons to uh, Gift the Magi, as that's what this episode is very heavily leaning upon. But all in all, just a really fun, enjoyable tale and a great return for Maude. And I'm done. <laughs> Play me it's off, all right. And, well, I just realized, even though I said inverbal, inverted alphabetical order... I have already gone the chaos route because we actually have Terra Hoof who starts with the T. <laughs> so you, you go next because I accidentally skipped you and I'm sorry. Well, Torterra starts with a T too, so if, even if it was Torterra or Terra, they both start with a T. Terra Hoof, whatever. It starts with the T and technically you should have went first. <laughs> but instead you went with the chicken to go first. <laughs> everything is, everything is chaos. Awesome. Just stop. <laughs> Don't you even? I didn't say anything. <laughs> I was talking to the bird man. Uh, anyway, carry on. Yeah, just let it go. Is that a frozen reference? That. Yes, it was, and I actually appreciate it. Okay, what are your thoughts on the episode? I actually really like the episode. You don't see a lot of episodes with Pinky and Rarity together, and with Modern with the twist, it was pretty interesting. I don't know much about uh, Manhattan since I've never been there. But seeing more of the city, I actually kind of enjoyed it. And Norman? Well, this is one of those episodes where it's a welcome change from the norm that we always get, which is Rarity being a diva and Pinkie Pie being overly hype. And we do get a balance here with um, Maud, where Maud is kind of the street man for the duo. And, well, seeing the sights and... Hearing the sounds, it's kind of cool. And also, what else? Um, the lesson for this one is kind of heart-touching. That's going to be a word. Oh boy, and it's me. What do I think of the episode? <sighs> I will say it is a step up from the crystalling. God, God knows it's a step up from the uh, crystalling. But 
I didn't really enjoy it as much as I thought I would. Even though Rarity is my favorite pony and Pinky is my fourth favorite pony. It, I enjoyed it, yet I just sat there. I don't know, maybe it was during the time, like, the stuff was happening and stuff, but I I wish I liked this episode more. It, it sort of bored me, in a way, with the predictable storyline, yet not so predictable storyline. It's confusing and conflicting, and oh, Manhattan, what you do to me. I do have to point out one thing when we reach that part, but it's kind of a major plot hole or kind of an easy solve but when we get there we get there i guess it just comes off in the sense of i never really liked traveling over manhattan i never really enjoyed manhattan as a city in the mlp universe it just underwhelms me every time and it gives off that type of atmosphere well, not like that too they visit it so many times now mm, just three times I guess I only enjoyed it when we first saw it in, what was it? It was Rarity's key episode. Uh, Rarity Takes Manhattan? Yeah. That's the only time I ever um really enjoyed it. But anyway, how are we going to go about this, boys? Are we going to go it by themes, or are we going to go it scene by scene? Uh, personally, for me, I think scene by scenes, because there's nothing really much going on in this one. Yeah, I'd roll scene by scene. Yeah, I was going to say scene by scene anyway, but I want to ask you guys because I'm I'm still nervous as a host. Yay! So the episode starts out with Pinkie Pie bothering everybody, and oh boy, isn't that nice? And we learn that Rarity is going to be expanding her business into Manhattan. And while well, she says, oh, it's no big deal, the next scene she's all, oh my gosh, it's Manhattan, it's Manhattan, I must be jumping all around, oh, I don't know. Well, she's excited for the town Manhattan, and we forgot to mention the two traveling ponies, um, who was them again? The Planes, Trains, and Automobiles ponies. Yeah. Based on I mentioned life. them at the beginning. <laughs> beginning but what we haven't mentioned is that so many people saw apparently nothing makes you feel old like listening to bronies talk <laughs> because so many people's like oh wow they showed a, a homosexual couple that's progressive it's planes trains and automobiles yeah I, it's a, oh my it's, god it's a bromance it's a movie about <laughs> it's so romantic <laughs> Wait, people are actually saying that stuff? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Many pe many people didn't get the reference. They and if this isn't social commentary, uh, two guys sitting next to each other, and apparently, if you're not uh, related, I guess you must be in a homosexual relationship. Can't Fine. people just sit next to each other without being clashed? Like, I, uh, I don't know. Well, you I do know, know that once a male ship. pony and a female pony are put together, boom, that's it. People say they're shipped. Yeah. Their physical proximity <laughs> determines that they're in love. Oh, my. Okay, this will have something to do with that. Her brainwashing knows no bounds. <laughs> yeah, but I, I do like this one. If you look at those, uh, what was the character's name for uh, trains, planes, and automobiles? You know, it's funny, even though I, I lament that people don't recognize it, I'm having a hard time remembering as well. Yeah. Me too. Let me look it up. Uh... Yeah. While you look it up, I'm going to say that they're still traveling, by the way. Like, they're, they are still traveling. Like, it, what? We last saw them on season five, and they're still traveling. <laughs> so it's going to take them a while to get wherever they're heading to. <laughs> Let's see here. Yeah. Uh, the two characters are Neil Page, played by Steve Martin, and Dell Griffith by John Candy. Uh, the late John Candy. Yes, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. A comedy mm -hmm. man. I've heard a lot of, uh, what do you call this, theories about um, the movie. And one of them being, if they just waited at the airport, they could have avoided the whole thing. Well, that's kind of the point of uh, Steve Martin's character. He's a control freak <laughs> and couldn't couldn't afford to wait. <laughs> 
Yeah. Mm. But although we're also neglecting that the mom from Home Alone is on the train as well. Really? Again. Where? Again. Really? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, ooh. It's, is it the one where Pinky is the bone thing? Uh, let's see. So it's a wide angle shot of the entire train so you can see all the participants. Is it the woman with the red Oh, hat? yeah, I see it. How could I miss that? Oh, because we we were too caught up in all the other references. Leave us alone. So wait, she's the pony with the trench coat. Yes. Ah, oh, okay. Wow, this is what I call a really awesome reference. Hidden away. Yes. She's there, although she's been on the train <sighs> once before, so she's clearly not a good mother. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, I'm not sure about that gray fellow in the foreground. Hmm. Let's see the cutie mark. Probably it was, uh, it's just Nutella, probably. I don't know. Let, me, easy... let me look at it. I love how we're all just fascinated over the references and cutie marks. <laughs> we're looking at someone's butt right now, right? <laughs> yeah! No, but it's, this is... And then it went into After Dark. <laughs> no, but this is MLP in a nutshell. The animators, the writers, they do a good job of inserting um, characters into this universe where we are invested in the background details. Like, uh, soon to come, uh, we see ponies playing on those big giant piano thingies. So, keyboard. Yeah, key- keyboard? I sure it's not a piano. I, I don't know, but we'll get to see that later on. But the whole discovering, ooh, where where did this came from? What did this came from? Like, that that's very fascinating about this show that I highly enjoy. At the same time, it it can also be a bit overwhelming, especially when certain people in this podcast like to shame you for not understanding references. Ha, ah, Silver! What was that, you young whippersnapper? <laughs> Couldn't hear you with my culturally sensitive ears. <laughs> uh. How about we move on from this? So, Rarity and Pinkie finally arrive in Manhattan, Pinkie Pie rolling off the stairs into... To see her sister Maud. Yay. And boy, Maud is as deadpan as usual. Don't you see those eyes? She has passion in them. Yes, with a fiery burn. Okay. We don't really get much from this part. Like, it's just, oh, Maud's here. Skipping jumps and squeezing happiness. And I don't know. And party cannons. Hmm, yeah. But we do get to know that Maud is studying in Manhattan. So... That's the reason she's there. Studying what? Geology, probably. I I think so. That's what she's majoring in. She's probably staying all the cracks on the sidewalks. <laughs> Actually, she's getting. She's there getting her rock to it. Rock to it. All right, then. We're starting her new rock career. So they all get together after Pinkie Pie causes a scene, and Pinkie then asks. Like Rarity to like help her uh, find the perfect gift for Maud, or at least buy her some time to buy this gift that she wants to get for Maud Pie. After the introduction of well, uh, Pinky Maud at the train station, they are heading off to well join Rarity in looking for her newest location in Manhattan, and oh. and at the same time too. Pinky is explaining to Rarity about Psit. That's uh, Pinky's surprise. What was it again? The acronym? Oh boy. I don't Pinky's remember. Sister either. Surprise? Yeah. Uh... Pie Sister Surprise Trade. Ah, uh, Pie Sister Surprise. Uh, you know what? Hey. Pinky Pie and her logic. But yeah, it's basically a time where the P, the Pie Sisters trade off gifts and show their affection for one another. And Pinkie Pie says, or Pinkie Pie tells Rarity that Maud always gives Pinkie the most awesomest gift every year. And for this year, Pinky wants to give something awesome too. And that something is a rock bag. I personally thought that it was a D20 bag, but eh. So apparently Pinky's not much of a planner as she could have, I don't know, ordered a head or bought this before she got on the train. But no, she's chosen to do the most difficult task, which is, of course, the way of this show. Oh, yeah. These ponies are not great planners. <laughs> 
They are not very consistent or efficient, and that makes me mad. They plan things at like the last minute. <laughs> hey, 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 I have to give it to Pinkie Pie. She knows how to throw a party. Yeah, actually, well, it's funny. Pinkie's usually the only forward planner in that regard. Mm, true that. Uh, and Everywhere else, though. Nah. Yeah. And Twilight is the most proper planner of them all. Like, she plans ahead for every little detail. But, hey, this is not about Twilight. It's about Pinkie Pie and Rarity. Twilight's probably back in her castle being bored. So, Pinkie and Rarity, as well as Maud, are traveling around Manhattan, going from place to place, going to a statued, ponified version of the Statue of Liberty. Then moving on to, I'm not really sure, I'm just assuming this is a place that Rarity is looking at, that keeps them cramped. How did they all get in there if they were just going to get stuck like that? I'm not exactly sure, like, where the location is. I've never been in New York before, but I've seen, like, this, uh, this skating rink. I think that's the Rockefeller Center, yeah. where N- NBC and other uh, stations are hosted. Ah. Also, it's where 30 Rock is, is recorded. Yay. Also, I have to point this out. Rarity's outfit here is just so fabulous. It's so fabulous, only to get covered in snow because of Maud's fabulousness. No, I think Pinky's uh, carelessness, but Maud knows how to oh, skate. Like, Maud here, like, whew, she's a pony of many talents, and skating is one of them. But also, we see that, Sco- that Scootaloo's supposed a dad is in Manhattan as oh, well. Oh, point it out, point it out, location, location, where, 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 where? Well, unfortunately, <laughs> in the screenshots uh, available on Wikipedia... It's not easily seen. You have a close-up of a brown unicorn stallion with a diamond, three diamond cutie mark. Uh huh. Yeah, I see him. If you, if you yeah, look, I see it. If you follow the line from his tail to the ponies with the hockey sticks, you'll see a purple tail in the background. You know, those ponies were actually in Thanks for the Memories too. Exactly. So basically, it's just recycled animation. But everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, she's got the same color scheme as Scootaloo." He must be her papa. Well, her papa <laughs> has left her in the mid- back in Ponyville for some high times in Manhattan. Well, you remember what Lauren said, right? I remember Fluttershy was supposed to become a crazy cat lady. Mm. I think he would be her daughter-in-law. <laughs> yeah. No, one of them is that Scootaloo's parents have demanding jobs, and she really knows how to escape her babysitter. Spitfire and Soren are friends with benefits. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then there's the almighty Stud Muffin, who is rest in peace. Oh, yeah. Or pieces, in Silver's case. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But anywho, on to the next scene. Ah, uh, yes. And they all have a little get to get a get together at dinner as lunch pinky and whatever lunch dinner who cares it's it's a meal so they're all together and pinky and rarity hide behind a um giant menu how mod hasn't heard any of this is beyond me i don't know how a menu can block out the sub the sound waves i don't care how big it is no, but of course, uh, Pinky goes off to get her rock bag as Rarity is stuck with Maud. And I bet they're just talking about rocks because I don't remember exactly how this scene happened. I remember. Oh, go ahead. Rarity asks, uh, Maud how she met Boulder and then Maud talks about how she met Boulder. Wow. That's gotta be awesome. That's gotta be awesome. <laughs> Of course, where Pinky finally finds the pouch that she was looking for, the exact pouch, the one perfect pouch, only to find out the store is closed. Oh, no. And oh, what so a tragedy cliche. it is. The horror! The horror! <sighs> okay, here, here's where I have to put the brakes on and put logic into said matter. It's one of those cases where, okay, Stores close, you can't buy pouch. So sad. But who is Pinkie Pie with? Rarity. Yes. Well, Rarity. And what does That's Rarity the one do? That's thing that bugged me. Yeah, what does Rarity like, do? She can't, 
Yeah, she can, Pinky just can't ask Rarity to to make a pouch for her. <laughs> Maybe she didn't bring her sewing kit, and that's why she didn't ask. That's my exclamation. But still, it's kind of. But when you got an opportunity right there, it's just like really. At the same time, you'd have to make extra time going into a fabric store and taking the time to actually sew the bag. Uh, here's the thing, with Rarity's talent for doing stuff, I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it's going to take her that long. And Of course it won't, but still, you have to buy the fabric, you have to go. Mm. And what if the fabric store at the other side of the city, huh? Mm. No, yeah, kidding. here's here's <laughs> the thing where we mentioned last week about Shining Armor putting up the shielding spell for the Crystal Empire. Like, he didn't do it at all, meaning, well, we won't get that scene, but... At least if he tries it and explains that he couldn't do it because of his fatigue, then okay, we have at least an answer for said reason. But this one here, everything points out to Pinky asking Rarity for help. And we didn't get that. It just bothers me. It's okay. I understand. It bothers me too. I'm just trying to give another... I'm trying to be a bit of a devil's advocate, if you say. But of course... Pinky is caught trying to break into the store and is stopped by the police. And oh boy. <laughs> the first and only police officer in Equestria. <laughs> yep. Yes, we don't uh, see a lot of police officers. And yet she still doesn't arrest Pinky. Whoop, whoop. Oh, the shame. And yes, well, I, I actually she thought she was going to be arrested. <laughs> I know it's a dark thing, but I thought she was going to be arrested. Me too. <laughs> Especially when, um, you know, commercial breaks start. Also, Pinky harassed a child, which... Oh, really? Yeah. Well, yeah, she, uh, a mother <laughs> and her, and her filly were, or at least an older pony and her filly were walking down the street. Pinky sort of reached out and gave the child a little, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? Speech and shake, and it's like, you touched the child. So now we're in trouble. I think oh, Celestia yes. had to pull some strings for this one. Oh, probably. It's like, oh, Pinky, you did it again. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this probably all happened like, during okay, the commercials. <laughs> yeah, with insurance thingies and ad for cartoons. Well, it's more like bail. Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. Don't, like, you don't get out of jail by having insurance in no, America. No, I'm just talking about the commercials. In America. Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> oh, my gosh. But anyway, yes. Carrie. Unless Pinky got to get out of jail for free card. Mm, that works. She still sulks back, feeling depressed that she couldn't get the pouch, and it sort of shows as uh, Rarity orders the biggest sundae that would give anyone diabetes. <laughs> I know that go. thing would kill me in an instant. Oh, boy. It's a bittersweet end. Yes. <laughs> yes. As Pinky screams and shouts about her demise, under, like, the, uh... Sunday that Maud is on the other side of, completely unaware that Maud is on the other side of it, as she freaks out, then eats it all. Pinky Pie Cartoon Logic. I... Got no, yeah, just no comment. Yeah. I know, but but still, uh, bleh. Does she not hear you? Does she not have ears? I think this is one of those cases where Maud hears everything and tries not to think about it or tries to play dumb and gives Pinkie Pie the surprise. Maud is constantly distracted by the blame game. She's always finding fault. Oh, yes. <laughs> Good uh, point. Uh, anyway, next scene, we go to the toy store. Yay. I feel a... like this is a uh, reference I don't get, but I think from Silver's review, it's from Big? Yeah, Big. Remember that one with... Uh, Guy who acts really good, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Yeah. Okay, I know what movie you're talking about. It's the uh one where the kid goes to the fortune teller, right, yep, yep. and wants to be big, but he didn't like specify. Yeah. Yeah, it's a be careful what you wish for type of story. Oh, but I love that movie because it has two alternate endings. But yeah, and um, Pinky is trying to like playing around on the keyboard while. Um, Rarity is trying to distract Maud and try to find the perfect gift for her that isn't the rock pouch. Mm -hmm. So she's going around, traveling around Manhattan, 
And she's looking at all this other stuff, looking at everything, like from toys to gems to anything from a flea market to try and find her the perfect gift, but it's not exactly working out, because all she ever cared about in any of the scenes is a crack <laughs> on the sidewalk. Again, finding fault. <laughs> Asphalt. What'd you exactly. call me? <laughs> uh. Uh, asphalt. <laughs> Oy. I would have gone with Twilight's uh. cane. And Rarity's uh, book from Inspiration Manifestation, as well as Smarty Pants and the shark that was jumped in Slice of Life. You think Big Macintosh is somewhere in Manhattan just looking around? No! Play the sad piano music. Uh, like. Oh, the Twilight cane's yeah. there. Yeah, it's Viking. It was first mentioned and stuff. Yeah, Twilight's probably would have a conniption if she saw that thing again. <laughs> <laughs> Although I can only wonder, will Rarity actually pay for any of the stuff that she threw on the ground, possibly damaging any of the stuff? Like, it's a break it, you buy it situation. Are you not at fault or something? Ah, uh, uh, there's the fault line again. Oh, shush you. The fault lies not, not in the cement, but in ourselves. It's not my fault, man. It's not my fault these puns are so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> and Rarity gives off the best friggin' Pinkie Pie impression I've ever seen. Have any of you seen anyone try to act like Pinkie Pie before? You have to admire this one little scene, though. Very much. Rarity, Rarity doing her best Pinkie Pie with proper physicality. Uh, which one was it now? Like, before she... Discovers like the pouch that she sees from the, you know, the. I think grubby. that's after she gets the pouch and trades it with the cannon. Yeah. Oh, then I was wrong. I'm sorry, Norman. I feel bad. Yeah, because uh, I was wondering about that one too. I'm sorry. I'm. I, I haven't rewatched the episode like a million times, so I don't remember every little thing. And I'm hosting, and I'm nervous. It's okay. Pinky actually goes around trying to ask for this shady guy to trade um for the pouch that from the looks of it he sounds like he doesn't really need but is just looking for money anyway it's kind of on his cutie mark yeah i think it's called a hustle sweetheart hey not everybody's seen zootopia yet and it's and that's not even a hustle that's just a mean way of uh, do the hustle da, 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 da. <laughs> love that song <laughs> and dance so and now we make party. Yay! I'm going to have that song so... stuck in my head now. <laughs> later, later. Ah, uh, yes. So, Pinky pulls out the party can and blows it up in his face. And he suddenly gets the awful idea of using it as a weapon as she decides to trade the party cannon for the pouch, which is really an unfair trade if you think about it, considering how... You know, it's a pouch. It's made of fabric. You can get that anywhere. A party cannon? You can't really get that anywhere. Unless you buy it on Amazon for one ninety nine ninety nine ninety nine. Hmm. Yeah, but I think this is one of those cases where, oh, you really want it, don't you? Well, I have the power. Oh, why am I thinking of the like, emperor now? Ha, ha. Oh, you mm -hmm. want this, don't you? Oh, that emperor. I thought you were talking about the emperor's new groove. This is why you scare me, Silver. The pinky yeah. pie is staring in you now. <laughs> uh, but anywho. Norman, save me. <laughs> yes, I shall save you by going He's through. gone to the dark side. He's always gone there. Gone to? Yeah, gone to. What, where do you think I hang out? <laughs> yeah, he's always <laughs> there. Look at who's living with him. That's true. Sombra. <laughs> Oh, really? Cadence kicked you out already, <laughs> Silver? Cadence? What? Isn't it confirmed that you were living in the Crystal Empire? No, man. Like, get your lore right. He's living in the Castle of the Two Sisters. Wow, we, we've we've gone from to reviewing an episode to talking about my OC's <laughs> living <house. laughs> We are an easily distracted bunch. Yes, we are. But I remember seeing something like that on Twitter. <laughs> but, Never mind. But anyway, um, but anyway. Squirrel! <laughs> But Rarity okay. is at her breaking point, I think. She has listened to Maud's How I Met Boulder speech. <laughs> How I Met Your Boulder. <laughs> uh, wow. 
Uh, and then she's tried to shop for the perfect gift, held in there, and Pinky is just so beaten down. Now, people have asked, uh, she has multiple party cannons, presumably, because of all those explosions we heard in Castle Sweet Castle. Mm -hmm. Uh, and realistically, uh, losing one shouldn't be a big deal to her. Mm -hmm. However, Pinky has spent the whole episode celebrating with this party cannon. It's, it's something she's associating with this special day. It has great, uh, sentimental value to her. So yeah, I totally buy that she's bummed she had to let it go. I saw that coming. Sing to me your symphony of tears. <laughs> And the thing is with the party cannon is that this could be one of the party cannons that has been with her since day one. And even being referenced in the Pinkie Pie and Twilight Micro, or was it Friends Forever, where Pony Archie commented on the cannon itself. So it has a lot of sentimental value to it. With the party cannon that was in Castle Suit Castle, those were the miniature models, one shot kind of deal. Now when you say day one, do you mean from at birth? What kind of parents give their child a cannon as a baby? Like, why? I mean Sorry. in the first episode. Come on. <clears throat> the Gifting Stone did say that she was meant to have a cannon, and so it was. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. It was her destiny. But anywho, after Pinky revealed to Rarity that she had to give the party cannon away to do get the pouch... Uh, we go on to the Pasit. Well, actually, one sec, we, we leave you one thing out. And mm -hmm. this is something I really like about Pinky's character. Although she's super bummed that she had to give away her party cannon, the minute she realizes that she's got the perfect gift for her sister and Maud will be so happy, a lot of her vitality returns. Mm. Pinky really is energized by the joy of others. Yeah, because usually you see them like if something happens and they stay sad for like a long time. But then as you mentioned, yeah, Pinky starts to be all happy again because she got the gift from Maud. True, true. What is it? Like, that acronym. I know I should know this acronym, but what is it? Oh, the Pie Sisters Swap Day Song. <laughs> uh, so they do that as Pinky and uh, Maud swap their gifts very, very tensely. I don't know how to, like, explain it. You... Get that mini tension of what's in the box. <laughs> oh, wow. All I can think of when you say that is William Shatner imitating Seven. Uh, yeah, yeah. What's in the box? So Rarity finally breaks as she watches these two sisters just stare at the box, trying to shake them and taunt her with, you know, what's in the box? Or at least on Pinky's end. She already knows what's in uh, Maud's end. So Maud sees the rock patch, and she's all, thanks. And but Pinky, on her end, gets cupcake-scented confetti for her party cannon that she can't use. Uh, and then you have to ask, what, cup what cupcakes are we talking here? Are we talking the delightful pastries or the horrible fanfic that everyone likes no, to quote for no, Pinky? No, 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 not that one. I was just going to mention the cupcakes back in season one. The baking bads? Yeah. Oh, not that one too. With the worms and... Yeah. You know, I won't go into detail. No. But anyway, we do see here that Pinky enjoys her gift and gives Mott a big hug. Rarity sees this and, well, she smiles. She, she knows what it means to be a sister. Yep. And then Rarity spills the beans. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Well... Inadvertently, because now we learn that Maud is the greatest enhanced interrogation in all of a question. <laughs> she just has to stare, and then she breaks ponies. Yeah. Just by staring. That Ooh. rarity is really, really weak. Mm -hmm. She would never last in the army. Well, here's a question. Whose stare is more powerful? Maud or Fluttershy? Or Fluttershy. Boy. That is a tough question. Well, Fluttershy is able to control animals, although it's not enough according to your late St. Patrick's Day special, Silver. But, I don't know. Maud is able to break ponies. 
Breaking animals or breaking ponies? Which is the better trait? Uh, I think breaking bad would be the best trait. Yay. Hmm. Like, well, let's also not forget about Maud's teleportation skills where someone tries to walk away and next you know she's in front of them again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we haven't reached that part, but yeah, she's dangerous. So, after Rarity spills the beans, Pinky figures this out after Maud tells her and... Rarity feels bad, and they go back to interrogate, or at least try to find the guy who took uh, Pinky's party cannon. Well, he didn't really take it, like steal, but he, you know. He's a sleazy guy who kind of just ripped off Pinky. And, and they fa- they found it with the power of mod sense. Yes. All the Pi sisters have some form of sense. Extra they just sensory. gotta figure out. We just have to figure out the angry one and the shy one's senses. I'm going to assume that one of them has nonsense. Uh Uh, uh, uh. So yeah, by the power of Maud's fiery passion that is located in her eyes, slowly melting at and trying to burn this guy's heart alive, I don't know. Something violent in internal organs. Yeah. I, I think it's helped by Rarity exaggerating everything. He's going to have nightmares. Uh-huh. Nightmares for the rest of his life, just staring into those eyes. Anyway, uh, so the trade is given back, and Maud has to give up her uh, gift for Pinky, which is sort of like a gift to the Magi. Um, I don't know. I, uh, okay, we're we're at this point now where I can finally draw the comparison as we've gone start to Yeah, I, I'm i sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's all good. But people people have uh, tra- argued this with me on uh, on an initial impressions video I did. Gift of the Magi, for those who have not read it yet, and why not, basically the idea is that a young married couple who are very financially poor want to get one of the Christmas gifts. The wife has foot-length hair. I mean, it it goes down the entirety of her back and legs and everywhere else. And it, she views it as her most attractive feature. It is the feature that her husband praises the most about her. She, now I've never understood what what anyone would pay for that. Why would you pay for that? But she sells that hair and is shaved and bald. Now think about what that means. She's going to have suspicious, confused, and judgmental looks from uh, the community for ages. The hair is going to take probably years to regrow. It is a significant loss of self, but she does this to buy a chain for her husband's antique watch, an heirloom from his family. And on the night of the gift exchange, she's willing to even lose his physical attraction towards her to bring him happiness. Well, he sold his watch to buy her a set of combs <laughs> for the hair that she is so proud of. And the idea is that they've both given something important because their love for one another is more important than anything. Now, it might seem like Maud and Pinky are doing likewise. However, Maud does not really give up anything valuable to her to get Pinky's cannon back. She gives up a gift she already received, so she's kind of resetting to zero, rather than suffering any detriment. And Pinky is getting her gift back, so there's the sacrifice is somewhat undone, and that's where I find that the uh, the analogy or the reference falls apart. Yeah, it kind of does when you think about it and when you explain it that way, because in the Gift of the Magi, it's kind of ironic or kind of, I, I don't know a proper word for it, but it's really just grim because the husband sold off his watch to, or heirloom pocket watch, was it? Uh, yes. Yeah, to buy her his wife a comb, which is, I'm going to guess, is a really fancy comb with diamonds and whatnot. And the wife sacrificed all of her hair to, well, buy a nice gold chain for the husband's watch. And... That giving gift thingy is going to be really, really interesting. But both of them sacrificing something for one or another. It's, it's both of them giving up something really important. With the episode here, 
Pinky didn't really sacrifice anything. She got her party cannon back. Mod, on the other hand, kind of, well, she gave away the pouch that she got. But the most important part here, according to them, is it's not the gift giving. It's not how you can one up me. It's about the meaning behind the gift. It's like it is sort of a double lesson, though. Like it gives the gift of the magi. Well, it's not really a double lesson, but it gives off that gift giving is not a competition type of vibe. I mean, oh yeah, yeah, I sort of get that a lot in my family because my family gives great gifts, and all I can give is art. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the thought that counts really because you are who you are because well, you're still a student. You're st- Still, you don't have the bucks to buy gifts. And from what I know of American culture or Western culture is people just give gift cards for Amazon and whatnot because they don't want to think hard and long for what they want to get. So I'll just give you gift cards so you can buy whatever you well, want. Well, it's more like, um, well, yeah, it's a buy whatever you want factor. When it comes to gift cards, some people... It's better if, like, they get what they want so that they know that they got something that they wanted, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. understandable, understandable. Personally, I'd rather have something I want plus a gift card, (laughs) but yeah. (laughs) I'm tempted to read this book now. (laughs) It's a short read, but it's a wonderfully done tale, and probably one of the finer moments of romance Mm. that that I've read. Genuine love rather than creepily staring at one another. Silver, who knew you were such a romantic? But my heart beats with passion. Yay. Ah. And it burns <laughs> it through burns. your eyes. Mm-hmm. Oh, they have they have eye drops for that. It's called by Z. Yay. <laughs> anyway, so the episode finally ends off with Rarity and Pinky, along with Maud, finally seeing Rarity's new, like, store for, you know, the Manhattan Boutique. Mm-hmm. Rarity and, for you. Uh, yes. And Rarity just makes a bunch of weird faces, <laughs> and that's all I can really say, because I don't remember the, how everything really ended. So, you guys take over. This one here is, well, Pinkie Pie has added Rarity into the mix of the gift giving, so now next year she has to give a gift too. And she makes the whole mistake of, oh, I need to one up you guys. And I think Pinkie said, or Mod said that, it's not about the gift, it's about the sentiment. It's about the love mm-hmm. that goes into it, so... Which is what you say when you get people an awful gift. Oh, uh, yes. Uh... <laughs> this, this has been your cynical thought for the day. <laughs> Enjoy. Uh, but that's the episode. Although, uh, yes. isn't Rarity expanding rather aggressively? She just got her Cancelot days. But here's the thing that That's we true. here's the thing that we don't really know the time span of how long she had her store in Cantalot. Given how ponies seem to accomplish like months worth of work in a few days, I've got to go with not that long. Eh. Pretty much the best thing we get. Rarity says that oh, since Cantal, uh since the boutique in Cantalot is doing so nicely, so she wants to expand it. Do you think Lauren Faust dreamt of this moment for Rarity? She did say in an interview that Rarity's destiny, quotes, was to get a boutique in Canterlock, but honestly, I don't believe destiny can be reduced to just a piece of pop. Yeah, I mean, the sentimental value of owning a store in Canterlock does, well, it's awesome, good for her, but this one here, I don't know, it's one of those cases where probably this is awesome. And then the episode just ends off on, well, you know, Hurry, come on. So anyway, so final thoughts, final thoughts. Final thoughts. Oh boy. Because I accidentally um skipped him during the first part, and I apologize, this is my first time hosting, and I'm already doing a terrible job. Uh, Tara, what were your thoughts? Final thoughts. <laughs> it was a pretty good episode. I have to read this book that you guys were talking about so I can get the full detail. But most of it was kind of cliché because you, you pretty much know what's going to happen about, oh, you know, yeah, it doesn't matter about the gift. It's the thought that counts. And like we talked about earlier how we already could have made a pouch for her and the problems would have been solved. But also, too, the episode probably wouldn't last long. So 
It was still a good episode, though. And Silver. I'm old. Be- because I recognize the references and I know what Bo- the gift of the Magi is and no one else seems to get it, which means I'm just an old bad. Oh, the I get it! You're sophisticated. You read books. Books are full of learning. But anywho, it's a fun, enjoyable episode. Maud is the perfect manifestation of the straight mare comedy style. The more Pinky and Rarity react, and the more underwhelming Maud's reaction, the funnier the scene. If you ever paired off Maud with Fluttershy, it would go nowhere. Mm-hmm. Like, fast. Didn't we get that in her first appearance? That was mostly just saying hi to this horrific-looking spider that was actually mm-hmm. such a sweetheart. But can you fi- figure a whole episode Oy. with those two? No, not no. a clue. Yeah, I don't think it would work. I don't. I don't think it would be a good use of either of them. So this was this was a great outing for Maud. Always good to see her again. And well, you know, it's it's New York. It's Main, Manhattan, Manhattan. God, if I ever go if I ever go back to Manhattan, I have to watch. My I've mouth. never been there. Well, just think, yeah. hey, it's so good to be here in Manhattan. The hell are you talking about? <laughs> uh... I've never been to New York, so ugh. And then I get beaten up by someone because I called Manhattan the wrong word. Uh. <laughs> but uh, all in all, just really enjoyed it. There are some practicality issues. But there are many practicality issues in My Little Pony. So that does not ruin an episode. It's just sort of, eh, you ponies are delightful, funny, and warm-hearted. Man, you're all pl- mm-hmm. planning. Man. Ah. And uh, Norman. Well. I like this episode. I won't say it's the best episode out um, so far, but it's one of those episodes where it was better than the premiere. <laughs> during the during the time, I said that this was the best episode of the three because it had well funny scenes and having Mod being the straight pony for Rarity and Pinkie Pie was a nice addition. The new writers for this one. Uh, Michael P. Fox and Will Fox did a great job on the episode. And I can't wait to see what they do more. Because, well, if we got this one out of those two, just imagine what we can get in the future. And for me, my opinion still stands. And I, I'm sorry I hadn't, like, rewatched the episode to, like, get a better feel of how this, how this MBS podcast is going to play. Mm-hmm play out. I thought I could handle it, but I I guess the reason why I didn't really rewatch the episode was because I didn't like find any reason to go back to watch it. It just didn't give this um this enjoyable vibe. Like it's forgettable in my eyes. I mean, sure we have Mod and we have this pairing of ponies that we haven't really seen before. But and I love Rarity, I really do, but I just didn't really have a good impression, like, on this. And, well, it's not, it's not a bad episode. God, no. It's nowhere near as bad as others, but actually, it's not really bad. I just don't care enough. It's cool, it's cool. No, not every episode is going to be a winner. Yeah. I wish I did like this episode more. I wish I was, I wish I could have found myself, like, repeatedly going back to rewatching this episode, but I just didn't feel that need. Mm, okay, understandable. But anyway, Seppi, what's next week's review going to be? Ah, yes. The old saying, do pigs fly? Well, that question will be answered in next week's podcast as we go back to comic reviews and we get to see Applejack and Fluttershy Try to hide a pig. <laughs> With oh wings. boy. Alright. It's the Pegasus. Alright, dear Dan. Pigs can finally fly. Uh, Mr. Burns, yes. you got something to say then. <laughs> well, except for me and Norman, since we both uh, don't have yep, wings. Yep, yep. But anywho. On the MBS show, I am Sapphire Heart Song. I am the Silver Queen. And I am Norman Sanzo. And I'm Torterra1324. And this has been the MBS show, and we're saying to you. Adios. See ya. Ciao. Bye-bye. Uh-huh.
Nailed it. Ha, ha, ha.